Okay, so what I'm logging into right now is uh, the Cast Highlight user interface. Again, this is a software intelligence technology. It's a SaaS-based uh, product that uh, basically generates all these insights by analyzing the source code of an application. And then there's another input. We have a few surveys built into the product for capturing some more qualitative information about applications. For example, the business impact of an application to help prioritize how important the application is to a business or, or an organization. So those are the two inputs. We're analyzing the source code and we're capturing some qualitative information via surveys. Once those two inputs are generated and, and uh, uh, um, the results are uploaded to our SaaS portal, all the dashboards you see here are, are lit up and become available. Now, one important thing to keep in mind, when it comes to analyzing source code, all the analysis happens in the organization's environment on the premise. Uh, the source code never leaves the premise. You don't need to upload any source code. You basically are running an analyzer locally, um, plugged into the source code repository or just pointed at uh, you know, the location of the source code. It runs and then it produces a results file, which is just a statistics, uh, the results of the analysis. And that results file is just a flat text file. You can open up and look at it. That's the only thing that gets uploaded to this portal in addition to filling out some survey questions. So the source code analysis all happens locally. We don't need access to source code to, to generate any of these insights. Just wanted to mention that because that's an important aspect of how the technology works. But once you do that, uh, and it takes a few minutes per application and you can automate that and, and run them in parallel, you now have a, a number of different dashboards you can browse. So in this example, we're gonna browse through a portfolio of applications made up of 212 uh, applications. As you can see here, we have those different categories of software intelligence that I've mentioned during the setup, the software health, the cloud readiness, the open source safety. We have some quick portfolio insights, but we're gonna focus on this cloud ready uh, area for purposes of the demonstration. Now, to explain this a little bit further, cloud ready basically is a score on a scale of zero to 100. And the way we calculate this score is we're analyzing the source code, looking for those blockers that I, I briefly mentioned, also looking for good things. We have these things we call boosters that actually increase the score, right? And then once we do that, we basically calculate a score. The way to think about this score on a scale again of zero to 100 is the higher the score, the more ready an application is to be deployed as a cloud native application or to be deployed in a platform as a, as a service environment. That's the way to think of the score. The higher the score, the more cloud native, if you will, an application looks to appears based on the coding and the software engineering of the application. So if we click on this, we're gonna start at one dashboard that's at the portfolio level. So we're looking at all 200 plus applications and this is called the Portfolio Advisor for Cloud. This dashboard is used by uh, our users to start to plan out a migration of a portfolio of applications and to start segmenting them into different categories. Here we have a version of the five R's you may have heard of where the product has automatically segmented and is recommending which applications in the portfolio should be rehosted, refactored, re-architected, rebuilt, retired, et cetera. Here we have our distribution and we call this our parliament chart. And then here we have every application represented by a bubble with a couple of uh, metrics. So we have like the health of the application on the vertical axis, and then we have the cloud readiness on the horizontal axis. So we're representing the portfolio in a few different ways. If you wanna see the full list of applications, they appear down here. And we list each application with some additional metrics. Uh, now, just because Cast Highlights automatically recommending that a given application, for example, should be refactored, you have the option to change that manually because you may know something about the application that you know is you know something that we can't determine automatically through a source code analysis. So you could manually change that uh, recommendation and save it. So let's take a look a little bit deeper about how this works. So for example, we look at one of these segments, the re-architect segment, right? So re-architect means you're doing much more than just simple refactoring changes, but you're not rebuilding the entire application from the ground up. It's somewhere in the middle, right? So you're gonna do some pretty significant uh, change uh, to the code of the application. So I'm gonna drill into that segment and we have our apps here. I'm gonna turn on the names and I'm gonna hover over one here. There's an application I like to show here called Closure. This is a great example. 
So in the upper right there, you'll see some stats, you know, lines of code, how big is the application, things of that nature. But I'm going to start at the bottom on these colored tiles. Uh, 74 roadblocks, right? That's a count of the individual number of issues in the code that could prevent or hinder migration. Then cloud ready, we see the score is 60.91. That's actually a pretty good score. So you might think by just looking at those first two elements that this is maybe a good refactoring candidate. It doesn't have a lot of issues. There's only 74 of them and the score is pretty good. But then if we continue going up, you see some of these other scores that are more on the software health area, things like elegance, agility, resiliency. The resiliency, agility, and elegance scores are essentially uh, identifying how likely is this application to have production issues? How hard is it to maintain? How complex is it? As you can see, those scores in red, they're relatively low. Again, they're all on a scale of zero to 100. That means this is an unhealthy application. So because of that, instead of simply refactoring it for the cloud, Cast Highlight is uh, recommending that it also be re-architected to kind of improve some of the resiliency and complexity issues that this software application has. And that's why it actually ended up in the re-architect bucket uh, versus in the refactoring bucket. That's just a simple example of how the model works, how the calculations are working. Uh, the calculations are completely transparent. You can customize them. You can create your own segments and formulas and weights, etc. This is just an out of the box model that comes with the technology. So uh, let's look at one application a little bit more carefully. So I'm going to pick one and that'll be this application down here. In fact, if I click on this little target icon here, it brings up uh, a, a basically a calculation, a little grid that shows you how it was recommended to be a refactor candidate. Uh, and it'll show you the kind of the scores it got for the other segments, but refactor had the highest score. So that's why we're recommending that. If I click on that, I'm now gonna leave the portfolio level of the 200 plus applications. And I'm gonna go down and look at this one single application. So now I've already done my portfolio analysis. I've segmented my portfolio. Now I wanna look at this one application that we've identified as a refactor candidate. This application has a cloud ready score of 64.8. That's actually a average between some inputs through a survey, which you can see the survey questions and answers here, and the inputs through the source code scan. All right, so let's take a closer look at that scan to see what's happening. Basically what the uh, scanner is doing is it's looking through the source code of the application, looking for what we call blockers. These are patterns in the code that will make an application harder to or impossible to migrate and be cloud native. If we find one, we reduce the score. If we don't find it, we increase the score. We're also looking for things called boosters. These are more cloud friendly coding practices. If we find one of those, that also increases the score. So an example of one is performing file manipulation. We talked about that briefly before. We found that. We found this happening in this application. We found it in the Java code. We do this by technologies. This app actually has a few different types of technology in it. Uh, so we found that in the Java code over here in this column roadblocks. This is a count of the individual occurrences of a blocker, right? So we found this perform fund of file manipulation blocker. It occurred 157 times, so that's 157 roadblocks. If I click there, I'll see the location of where all of these um, roadblocks are occurring. We'll also estimate the effort that's going to be required. Uh, you can customize this effort calculation, but out of the box, we will estimate the effort to remove that blocker. And if you ever want to understand a little bit more about why this is an issue, if you click on this question mark here, this will bring up our knowledge base that gives you the full detail on why this is a blocker, what you should do, uh, how we detect it, and additional documentation and references. Uh, in addition to these blocker patterns and, and giving you the, the location and the effort, basically we're also making recommendations on what are the cloud ready services, uh, cloud native I should say services, that this application is probably a good candidate to adopt. So we'll do that for AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, IBM. Basically based on the technical characteristics and the types of functionality this application has, we are automatically detecting that and recommending different cloud native services from each of the cloud providers based on that information. If you're looking to containerize your application, we'll provide uh, similar insights there. Uh, if you want it to be multi-cloud, we'll provide insights there. And then finally, uh, we have a number of plugins to other uh, systems for 
further using these types of insights and data. So for example, if you use JIRA for issue tracking or management, uh, we have a plugin that plugs directly into JIRA. You could see we pulled for this application, you know, the blockers here, you could assign them to teams for remediation. So for example, if I'm a team member that's working on this application, I might have, here's my to-do list. Uh, that came out of the insights from Cast Highlight, and then were pushed into uh, Jira, and then assigned to me as a as an application developer. So again, very quick overview and demonstration of the technology in action. Essentially, as a quick summary, we started at the portfolio level, used the insights to start building that roadmap, segmenting and prioritizing application into different migration paths. Uh, then we drill down into one application to understand any open source or third party library dependencies that might have some risks, both security and legal. And then we looked at the cloud readiness. What are the blockers? Uh, estimate the effort to remediate. What do I need to do? Uh, get some recommendations on cloud native services that we could look at once we get to the cloud. And then I could push that information out into my uh, project uh, or ticketing system to start assigning those tasks to the team members. Thank you.